and Stanton is a very popular seaside resort. It's a better name, Sunny Honey. It's the only eastern resort that faces west. We do get an awful lot of sunshine. We are seasonal, so during the winter months leading up to Easter, we're quite quiet, and then it starts to pick up. The beach has become far more accessible, and that's why what we do, I think, is key to educate people that are coming for the first time about the risks. And there's a lot of people that live in Huntstown and they know the r &L exists, but they don't really know what it, it's all about and what people do. So we've got uh, unconscious casualties in the sand dune between here and uh, Raw Point. Zero, zero, zero. Two, nine. Decimal three, zero east. There are only four lifeboat stations in the whole of the country, so the UK and Ireland, that have a hovercraft. So we are very, very privileged to have one here. The RNLI actually has seven in total to a relief. So if this one needs to go for service, then they will bring us a replacement. And then there's one that they keep at headquarters in Poole for use in training purposes. To become a hovercraft pilot takes around about a year, 18 months. They'd like you to collect 40 hours behind the controls. You're not only demonstrating you can fly a hovercraft, you're demonstrating you can fly a hovercraft on a rescue. I've been on the crew for um, seven years now, and I'm a hovercraft commander and B-class helm. Basically, you're in overall command and overall charge of both the SAR unit, obviously the crew that are on board, and then any, any casualties that you go to. You're making sure everybody's safe, everybody knows what they're doing. Some of those shouts happen during the day, so I'm, nine out of ten times I'm not really here, um, but there's been the occasional one in the evening, um, just before we're about to get into bed, and two hours go by, and then four hours go by, and then six hours go by, and you think, okay, it's now been most of the night, what's happened? And unfortunately, there's no way of kind of tracking the bay or getting hold of what's going on. You know, there can be some really nasty shouts, and some of them are quite easy. Some of them are a bit more horrific when you're taking injured fishermen off boats and perhaps kite surfers land nasty and break bones in the body. Uh, January last year, a kite surfer literally ran out of energy, had nothing left. All the correct equipment, the proper wetsuit, the gloves, the helmet, went out, brought it back in, and it was just pure fatigue. I will often say to them, when you're thinking, I'm tired, but one more, that's the one you shouldn't do. Every now and again you'll get a serious kite surfing incident and um, it happened a few years back, called out kite surfer in trouble off on Stanton. We jumped off, helped him from shore, started doing CPR, called everybody, we had air ambulance, paramedics, everyone come. It was only when we was dealing with a casualty that uh, we knew him. He was a local chap, his daughter and my daughter went to school together. Unfortunately he didn't survive, but that will always stick with me, because then I die. So. Some of the services we do have been horrific on this station. We've had helicopter crashes, plane crashes, all sorts of things. And, um, you know, they, they affect the crews greatly. Around the wash, we have two bombing ranges. On this particular day, with working down on the beach with uh, the coxswain and another crew member, heard the jet go over, sort of looked at each other. And as that happened, our pages went off and this Jaguar that crashed. Unfortunately, it was one of them jobs where it was a fatality, so it was just procedure just to, um, and, you know, recover the, the pilot at the time. You, you're not going to win every time. You can go out there and do your utmost best, but you, you're not going to win, and you've got to be doing this a long time. Some people can go 20 years in the iron line, not experience anything like this, they're the lucky ones. Although on the outside, they're hardened old crew, this lot but sometimes it can hit you inside and sometimes you can have flashbacks and um, that, can, that can be a bit, a bit stirring. And also we've got to remember they have family as well so we don't want that to prey on their minds. The RNLI have kind of bought into the trim process which is um, basically come out of the military, you know, train cancers that come and speak to 
all the crew that were involved in that tell you that the feelings you're going to have aren't you know abnormal it's expected and it's perfectly right to have those Coming to Hunt Stanton um, within the matter of a, a year of joining the lifeboat, there's always somebody that you can call on to do something. You'll have fathers, grandfathers, fathers, sons all involved with it all. And it's another family to me, so I don't have a family anymore. These are my family now. To know that you're part of that is, is a, yeah, it's a really nice thing. It does leave you feeling quite proud. They will never accept that they are heroes. They are just doing something genuinely because they enjoy it and they're helping people. It supports us from people being aware of us to people helping us out, coming to functions. You know, we are a voluntary service so we do need to raise money and uh, people are very supportive here. So it's all about getting the message out there about the work we do at a local station. 